Welcome to the second episode of Extreme Reloading. Today we're going to focus on two topics. First we're going to talk about a couple of case measurements, specifically case head expansion or CHE and second overall length. There's a lot of different measurements people can make on cases but these two in my experience have proven to be pretty informative and pretty useful measurements. Second, we're going to deal with neck turning. I'll demonstrate that using some Nossler brass, Winchester, Remington, and ultimately we'll start using our Lapua brass for this 243 Winchester. CHE is a useful measurement, first as a test of uniformity, and second, later on, as a test watching for uh, aging cases. While we already know our case lengths already satisfy SAMI specs, measuring case length can be useful during the final case sorting process. If you haven't heard me say it yet, you'll hear me say this a bunch of times. Consistency is accuracy. And that's the whole reason why we deal with case neck thickness. It's because a case we get from the factory, um, its neck is not going to be absolutely uniform. And I'm talking about the thickness of the case wall here versus here versus here versus here all the way around. And then compared to all the other cases that you have in your collection or that you're going to be reloading with. So what we want to have is we want to have this case and its uh, case neck thickness to be exactly the same as the second case that I load, the third case, the fourth case, the 100th, the 1000th case that I load. That's the ideal. And by turning our case necks we can approach that ideal. You may be wondering, well, just how non-uniform are the cases that we have? Now as you can see here on my Hornady gauge, this is set to zero, so I've rotated, calibrated it over to zero. I'm going to lift this up just a bit, fit this case neck on the mandrel, and I'm going to measure in about the center point of the case neck, not the edge right out here, there can be a little flare on those things from trimming, and certainly not right here back at the, uh, the place where the um, shoulder begins. I'm trying to shoot for the center point right about there. Now notice that its thickness right here is about 0.015 right about there. It's just shy of it actually. Now watch this dial as I rotate this case. You'll see it move just a little bit down to a 14 and back up to the 15. Now that's not a bad case. This is in or within a thousandth. This is a very nice, I really like these cases, Nossler case. Let's take a look at some others. Now, of course, for a given brand of, um, of case, there's going to be quite a bit of variance between, it, uh, between them. What I've noticed is that the Nostler brass is pretty darn good stuff. This is Winchester. Again, I'm shooting for about the middle point here. And right now, we're just shy of the point 15 or point 0.015. Okay, now you can see we're dropping a little bit more, raising back up to that beginning point. We're all the way around. So this one here varies, again, within about a thousandth. We'll check every one of our pieces of brass. And just test them for uniformity. 
the bottom line is that they're not going to be perfectly uniform. So that's why we want to do a case neck turning on these to bring them closer to absolutely uniform. And even after we finish our work on the um, turning the case next, they're still not going to be absolutely perfect, but we're trying to reduce the variability so we can thereby increase the um, our accuracy through consistency. Just to show you how this all works, if I place this here, I'm measuring right on that spot. And what we have now is at that spot, on that case, my gold case, if you want to call it that, my gold standard case, that is at 0 0.15. All right, so now that I have my gold standard case, this one right here, there's my mark. It's not perfectly concentric, so this mark is very important. I put this on with a Sharpie. What I did is I inserted this onto this mandrel, and I set the cutter so that it uh, makes contact, just barely makes contact at that point. The way I determined that was by lowering um, this right here and it drops it by one ten thousandth, I'm sorry, five ten thousandths of an inch uh, with each click. So I lowered it until it barely made contact, lowered it a little bit more, and then to test it how much uh, it's actually impacting it, I can move this back and forth. Um, and I had it in just such a way so that I would kind of start scratching that, uh, that mark that I had put on it. So I said, okay, that must be uh, at 0 0.15. Now the test, the proof is in the pudding. What I did then is after I turned some of these necks, I put it back on our handy dandy little gauge over here, uh, rotated it, we'll see how that goes in just a minute, and uh, it did indeed determine that we're at 0 0.015 of an inch. Next step, I just used this uh, kind of low power Ryobi rechargeable uh, hand drill. I didn't want too much power in this thing to kind of torque it over. I wanted to have a lot of control uh, as I'm turning these necks. So we simply slide this on. Okay, right like that. Okay. and we'll go ahead and do one of these cases. So I have this uh, thread cutting oil. Picked this up at Home Depot for a couple bucks, uh, about four or five bucks, I guess six bucks. And uh, we want to be careful not to uh, get this stuff too hot. You got to know that uh, heating metal or heating brass in particular will change its properties and how the more heat we apply to it the more brittle uh, it becomes and we don't want the mouth of these uh, cases to become brittle we want to keep them supple so they open and close gives us the longest case life so i'm applying some of that thread cutting oil right over here onto the mandrel itself and i kind of gob some on to the cutting surface uh, as well gob it on pretty well we're going to go ahead and run these cases through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner in a little while after this whole process is done. So I set this in here into the um, shell holder. Now the shell holder, I should uh, note, the shell holder's got to be a Hornady shell holder. The RCBS shell holders will not work uh, in this unit. So I had to buy some additional shell holders simply made by Hornady and they work out just fine. Then we move this thing forward, nice and slowly, and it'll lock up. You'll feel it lock up. Now all we're going to do is rotate and slowly insert this. And we're going to watch as this goes, and it starts removing material. See how it gets really bright? And we're going to remove that material. No hurry for this. Take your time. And I set that mandrel so it stops. I can't go too far. It stops before... 
the cutter impacts the actual shoulder. That's important. We do not want to be cutting into this part of the case, into the shoulder itself. Then I'm going to reverse this to let it release. It's that little bit. There we have it. Now let's go ahead and check it on our uh, micrometer gauge. So we're at zero. Make sure we're at zero, of course, before we start this. Lift this a little bit. Insert that case. I like to measure right here about in the center of this thing. Okay, right about there. Now I'm at 0 0.015 precisely. I actually did a beautiful job. As we rotate this, I want to make sure that I'm keeping it within a thousandth. within a thousandth and that's where we are. Now if we wiggle this all over the place, you know, we're gonna get crazy reading. So you gotta go slow, take your time on this thing, and get it right. Now this is not something that you're gonna do um, every time you reload. This is in preparation of this batch of brass. Okay, now I'd like to show you a few things. We completed uh, turning the necks on a bunch of different 243 brass. I've, I've done some, some Nossler brass, some Hornady brass, Remington, Winchester, as well as the 100 pieces of this brand new Lapua. Now one way to assess um, the brass after the turning is actually to look at uh, the results of that turning. I remember our gold standard was that we're looking for 15 thousandths of an inch uh, for the thickness, a uniform thickness of those uh, case mouths. Um, if the case thickness was actually less than that, then the cutter will make no uh, impact or make no difference on that case. And we see that sometimes. See this here? Okay, this whole section here is very nice. We've gotten this very uniformly done to the 15. Now we're starting to see uh, this little section in here, right near the mouth, um, is not. And then we have an entire section here that hasn't been touched by that cutter. And that means that it's less. It's thin right here and that means it's not uniform, it's not consistent. This is not going to get an A grade, if you want to call it that, um, in our final case sorting coming up. Similarly, this is uh, Winchester brass. Some sections of it look real good. But then we get an entire section from here almost a full quarter, almost a half of this case where the cutter never touched, which means again this is thin. Everything that has a nice clean cut appearance is going to be at uh, 15 thousandths uh, of an inch. Whatever didn't get cut is going to be thin and uh, or thinner than that and uh, not necessarily dangerous but not uh, consistent, not uniform. Grab the piece of Lapua here and this stuff. Now, not all of it. There's some of the Lapua brass, a few pieces of it that didn't have a complete consistent cut on it. There's just a little touch right there. Uh, but a great majority of it is absolutely uh, fresh looking brass, if you want to call it that. And I'm real happy with that. Okay, well, that takes care of it. Completes what we set out to do today. First we talked about a couple of case measurements that are pretty important to 
helping to ensure consistency in your uh, finished product. And at this point, your journal should look something like this. Secondly, we spent a lot of time talking about neck turning. Now let's go over the math once again. All right, so let's go over this. We are dealing with 243 Winchester. That, of course, has a bullet diameter of 0.243. According to SAMI specs, and in fact what we have measured, the outside diameter of the case necks is 0.276. That leaves us with a difference, when we subtract these two, of 0 0.033. Now this value, 0 0.33, includes the thickness here as well as the thickness here. So we need to divide this in half. That's why we take this and divide it in half, which then gives us 0 0.0165. And as I said earlier, what I like to do is just shave off about a thousandth, and so I'm shooting for 0 0.015 of an inch thickness, either here or here or here or here or anywhere along this case neck. Now some folks shoot for 0 0.014, 14 thousandths. That's okay. Might actually increase the uniformity because you'd have less of those low spots or thin spots that I showed you a little bit ago. However, for me, I'm also looking for case life and a thick enough case to really get a good grasp on that bullet. Now, case neck turning is not something that every reloader gets into or even has to do. The reason why we turn the case necks is, of course, to ensure uniformity or improve the uniformity and ensure consistency, which, remember, is going to equal accuracy out in the field. The whole concept is that as that bullet is seated in the mouth of that case, that there's a certain amount of pressure exerted by the case wall on that neck. Now if it's thinner in some sections and thicker in other sections, as that powder burns inside the case and builds pressure, at some point one part, the thin part, is going to be ready to release the bullet faster than or earlier than the thick part of the case, if we have non-uniform cases. In that instance, we are not going to be ejecting the bullet from the case in a uniform way. However, if we can ensure that the case neck thickness is very uniform, then we will be ejecting the bullet in a very consistent way, shot after shot after shot. And consistency is accuracy. That's what we're looking for. On our next episode, we're going to be turning these cases around, doing a little bit of work on the uh, mouths, but spending a lot of time on the heads, and specifically dealing with those primer pockets. Thanks for watching Extreme Reloading.